So this is my second video and already I'm straying from the uh, intended path. I was supposed to do power supply teardowns, but now what is this? Um, I bought this Milwaukee, uh, Milwaukee Fuel M18 CDD uh, cordless drill. This is like a professional grade cordless drill. It's really cool, really awesome. Uh, but it's got these lithium batteries and I bought this second hand. Uh, got two batteries. This one is a, a modern 4 amp hour, basically as new. Date code is 2015. So this is basically a new uh, battery. However, I also got the old battery. And unfortunately that one doesn't work. And as you could probably tell, if you're used to Milwaukee tools, uh, you're not supposed to uh, pull the battery in and out that easily uh, because I already disassembled it. <clears throat> to take a look inside, um, so these are the five battery poles. And there's a pack of uh, two times five cells underneath. Uh, nominal voltage is 18 volts, i.e. Uh, five cells of 3.6 volts. The battery poles, uh, I can just tell you right now, uh, this is the positive battery pole. Uh, you can see here it um, connects pretty much straight through to this tab and this tab uh, goes down to a big flat bar all the way down to uh, this battery pole here. Um, this is the negative and all of this is pretty obvious. I mean the outer poles are usually the uh, on any, any battery pack. The outer poles are the uh, positive and negative. Uh, then there is a big uh, SO package here and that kind of obviously is a MOSFET. So this has to be used for some kind of charging. Uh, and this, this side leads to this pole. So this is the charge pole. So what happens if you want to start charging the battery? Uh, the charger puts a voltage on here, it communicates somehow that it wants to start charging and then the MOSFET is turned on by the microcontroller. I can tell you already this is the microcontroller. Uh, besides that there is these two poles and here on the PCB it's... There you see... Um, so this is labeled battery plus, bat plus, right there. Uh, this is actually labeled charge and right underneath the bat plus is a J1. So this is the J1 pole and then this is the J2 pole. This is obviously the ground. So J1 and J2 are some kind of communication protocol and I would assume they use a variation on I2C. That's a bit of a bummer because as you could see like this battery I can show you if I uh, push the test button it's three quarters full at least three quarters full uh, I actually charge this with my uh, bench power supply just put the voltage on the poles it used to be one bar now it's three bars so the uh, charge estimation is purely done uh, on voltage i.e. the uh, microcontroller measures the voltage and Depending on some kind of lookup table, it determines how many bars it should display as how full the battery is. So it doesn't do Coulomb counting. And that's kind of important to know because let's just zoom out. No, and we can probably stay, stay like here. Um, that means it doesn't have a current shunt. Uh, so the basically the battery poles are directly connected from the batteries all the way to the uh, connector here. You would expect, you would expect this obviously because this is a very high power tool. Uh, it runs like 30, 40 amps. Uh, th th these drills are ridiculous. They have about as much power as you would normally expect a uh, quarter drill, like a mains power drill to have. Uh, really amazing how much power uh, and how big a power density these lithium-ion batteries have. However, you would expect the drill to run if the battery is full enough and it doesn't do that so it does communicate something over this bus to tell the drill 
no, you cannot start drilling. So the only way out really is to reverse engineer the protocol. Uh, eh. I don't know, let's just first look at the circuit board and then uh, see if we can find something else that's interesting. So, um, stuff we can see. Uh, so this is the, the battery pool. Let's just run by the pools first. As you can see here, uh, this pool is marked CT3+, plus, and then CT1+, plus, and then here's a 4+, plus, 2+, plus, and 1-. minus. These are obviously the battery pools, so it does uh, voltage... Um, measurement on there. Um, what you can also see is, you see like little resistor networks uh, and small capacitors here. Basically every battery pull is somewhat loosely associated with a uh, resistor divider and uh, and a capacitor of some kind. So they're, they're doing some kind of filtering. Uh, also here are two poles. That's a thermistor uh, connection. Those are the only other solder terminals uh, on here. And there is a, if you would um, disassemble the pack further, I actually did that before, uh, you can just lift out the whole battery pack and then there's a tiny little thermistor on a um, uh, flex PCB on the side of the pack. Kinda, meh, I would expect the majority of heat buildup to uh, be like right inside the middle of the pack. So the best place to put a thermistor is in the middle of the pack. They put it right at the side. I don't know. I guess, I guess it's okay. I mean, they're not, uh, they're probably already triggering over temperature at like 60 degrees C, which is very low. Uh, thermal runaway of lithium ion batteries is at like 120 or 140 degrees or something. So. Uh, they have a lot of leeway on that. Uh, and from what I understand, um, basically Milwaukee batteries don't really have many problems with overheating. Uh, like some other brands have, Metabo uh, has had some overheating batteries. You know, the usual, very slight brand differences. Uh, the rest here, well, obviously the MOSFET, um, there's a little 50 K ohm resistor and a transistor. I think this is the one that I beeped out to be the um, transistor they use for triggering this MOSFET. Uh, obviously you need some kind of way to, to get a reasonable DVDT on the uh, gate. Um, big capacitor, bigger capacitor. Those are obviously for power uh, here. Uh, those lead into this, this is a voltage regulator. A 3.3 volt, volt regulator that seems to be a negative voltage regulator actually. So the positive rail of the microcontroller is at 18 volts and then the negative rail is at like 15 point something. And then the only other really recognizable component, I mean apart from lots of things are marked Q or D, so they're obviously transistors or diodes. Uh, here is a little um, crystal oscillator or resonator or something. Um, not quite sure. Maybe we can scrape it off. Uh, there's a lacquer on top of all the components. I already scraped it off of a couple of components. Uh, I'm not sure what the frequency is. Probably pretty low, like one megahertz or something. Um, and then there's the microcontroller, which is obviously a TIMSP430 because everybody uses those for battery control. Uh, and low power stuff in general. Uh, and then there's the button and the LEDs, you saw those already. Interestingly, if you hold down the button for three seconds, it starts displaying this code kind of thing. It goes on for quite a long time. So did a uh, big flash, which is probably just a synchronization flash, and then two blinks, and then now it has some kind of serial code, or maybe a manufacturer code, uh, probably day, month, year, something like that. Not sure. I mean, that, that's usually how this, uh, this kind of stuff goes. Then third segment, does some other blinking. 
I'll um, I'll figure this out and put it in an uh, annotation or something. Well, actually, I'm not sure if I need to reverse engineer this system because I've had a bit of a breakthrough. So the batteries are here are the battery tabs. This is the negative battery tab. This is the positive battery tab. And obviously, this is the full battery voltage. The uh, positive ba battery tab is hard connected uh, to to here. Very obviously, there is absolutely no voltage over this. So you would expect. Hmm. Hmm. Wait a second. You would expect full battery voltage over here. And I, I had full battery voltage over these two contacts before, and I kind of assumed that the a negative battery terminal was directly connected, also hard connected to here. However, um, it's not. Uh, like now it's displaying 40 millivolts, but this is, it should display absolute zero if it was a solid connection. So there's something, probably some kind of protection device um, that has blown uh, that is in line with the uh, negative battery terminal. Uh, this is kind of annoying because that means I have to desolder the PCB and see what's underneath. Uh, because if I, I take the battery apart, um, you don't actually uh, get access. Like this is what happens. Like here's the thermistor I uh, told you about earlier. It's like, uh, I'll, I'll show you close to a tiny little flex PCB with a thermistor on. Uh, yeah, that's obviously not blown um, or, or malfunctioning or anything. Uh, it's, it's something to do with this negative connection. Unfortunately, with these smart battery packs, uh, usually when you completely desolder the PCB and uh, remove power from the microcontroller, uh, you're going to have a bad time because the microcontroller uh, will just wipe its RAM and uh, the battery will never start. So I have to keep the microcontroller powered somehow. Uh, yeah, I'll see how I figure that out. Uh, moment of truth. Uh -oh. Ha! Still works. So, um, yeah, this is the, the PCB hanging on wires, hanging on test points on the PCB. Yeah, it's a little bit shady. You can actually see this is the uh, flex PCB that goes to the thermistor. You can just pull out the thermistor essentially. And this is the negative electrode and it's a, it's a little bit floppy. And oh, well, there's your problem. It actually, Wow, that's that's not actually a well maybe it's supposed to be a fuse, I guess. That's horrible. That just broke. Did it melt through? Let me just look at it off screen. It's it's really hard to tell. Uh, yeah, it's really hard to tell how uh, how that actually came off, but easy repair, so that's nice. Well, it's uh, back together now, and as you can see, it still works. So now all I have to do is assemble the pack back together. Obviously, I kind of put it on the drill in this condition, and then. Uh, See if it works. By the way, I uh, there used to be 
like the glass fiber stuff here to insulate it, I uh, just replaced that with some uh, normal heat shrink. Uh, all right, moment of truth. Uh, we got that Milwaukee machine with the four amp hour battery and it obviously works. And the three amp hour battery that was uh, previously broken, uh, battery indication still works. Um, but the drill wouldn't turn and it wouldn't charge. So, haha, -ha! that LED coming on means the battery works again. This is awesome because these batteries are super duper expensive. And I was kind of bummed, like I got this machine for cheap. I got it for like uh, 166 euros with the two batteries, which for Milwaukee, high end this is like the high end non uh, hammer drill that's really cheap to have it second hand uh, it's only a year and a bit old it's a 2014 model uh, so I thought geez that's a really good deal uh, obviously the guy was just selling a broken battery so but I've got it fixed so uh, awesome now I have a uh, Milwaukee cordless drill with two batteries Super duper.